All right, so here we are asked to sketch the function m of x is negative 1 half by x minus 3 by x minus 2 by x plus 1 squared. So first thing we want to do is say, well, this is a polynomial function. And let's do a little bit of analysis on this function. So let's consider the degree, right? So what's the degree of the polynomial? All right, so let's look. We have a degree 1, degree 1, degree 2. So the degree of the polynomial is what? 1 plus 1 plus 2, that's 4. And so it's even. So I have an even degree polynomial. The lead coefficient, all right, the lead coefficient is negative. All right, lead coefficient is negative 1 half, so negative. Putting that together, what that tells me is my end behavior for the curve is down on the left, down on the right. Remember, for an even degree polynomial function, the standard, if we have a positive, is up, up, and for a negative, it's down, down. All right, so we've got the end behavior. Now let's focus on the zeros. All right, so let's find the zeros. All right, so to calculate the zeros, we're going to look at the variable factors. So if x minus 3 is equal to 0, x equals 3. And let's see, if x minus 2 is equal to 0, x equals 2. And finally, if x plus 1 square is equal to 0, x plus 1 then is equal to 0, which means that x equals negative 1. All right, so we've got all the zeros. Now let's mention the multiplicity, right? So we had the x minus 3, that was to the first power. The x minus 2 was to the first power. And the x minus 1 was to the second power. So we have multiplicity one, multiplicity one, and for x equals negative one, we have multiplicity two. All right, so we've got the zeros. Uh, let's find uh, the y-intercept as well. How about we find the y-intercept? So to find the y-intercept, we'll evaluate m of zero, and so that would be negative one-half by zero minus three, by zero minus two, by 0 plus 1 squared. So that's negative 1 half by negative 3 by negative 2. 0 plus 1 is 1 and 1 squared is 1. So that's negative 1 half negative 3. If I'm doing my calculations correctly. Okay, so now let's put all of that together. Let's plot the zeros. Uh, let's see, we have as 0 at x equals 3. Let's use a scale of 1s on the x-axis. So 1, let's, let me draw that in black here. All right, so 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. All right, let's plot the zeros. The zeros are at x equals 3, x equals 2, and x equals negative 1. All right, now the end behavior... Remember that the end behavior was down, down. So now let's use the end behavior. All right, so a little bit to the left of my leftmost most zero is going to be downward to the left. And a little bit to the right of my rightmost zero, it's got to be downward as well. Now let's fill in the gaps. Okay, so what's going to happen? At x equals negative 1, now, got to be careful here, at x equals negative 1, the curve has multiplicity 2. So what that means, remember, if it has multiplicity 2, it doesn't pass through the 0. It hits the 0 and bounces off. So it needs to look sort of like a parabola near that 0. All right, so at negative 1, it sort of looks like a parabola from the multiplicity 2. All right, now, uh, the curve's going to go down for a little bit, and we have the point, so it's going to continue decreasing. It's going to hit 0, negative 3. So now this point right here, 
is 0, negative 3. All right, and then eventually it's got to come back up. Now, what happens at x equals 2? At x equals 2, we have multiplicity 1. So what that means is near x equals 2, it looks like a line. It's just going to pass through the x-axis at x equals 2. So it looks like a line nearby. All right, now, approaching x equals 3, at x equals 3, we have multiplicity 1. So what has to happen now is the curve has to turn over, has to have a, a turning point, and go through x equals 3 as a line as well because of the multiplicity and connect the end behavior. So there's a rough sketch of the curve doing some analysis uh, of the zeros and uh, using the end behavior of the curve.